Thank you, everyone. Um, with that, I think we're, we're at four minutes past, so in the interest of time, um, we'll get started. Uh, we do have a couple of folks still trickling in. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today um, for this event that Andy India is hosting in partnership with Better Stories, um, this uh, connecting the Bangladesh entrepreneur ecosystem to a global network. Uh, the idea of this um, came about when we reached out to the Better Stories team to see if there was anything that we could do in helping um, one understand the ecosystem that has definitely come a long way in the past couple of years and also see how we can help support in terms of having access to a global network um, of organizations that are already doing wonderful things to support entrepreneurs um, in their respective um, areas. So if, is there a way we can introduce that to the larger uh, Bangladesh ecosystem and how we can, um, as Andy sort of play a role in facilitating some of that. Um, with that, I will jump right in. Um, so what do we have in store for you today? Uh, welcome, of course, introductions um, of, of those on the call. Um, we might not be able to go through everyone just in the interest of time, but that's specifically what the speed networking is for. Um, we'll have um, some presentations from the Better Story and the Andy India team, uh, just to introduce you to the work that we do. Um, works both ways for the folks in the Bangladesh um, side of the world to get a sense of what Andy does as an organization and for those um, joining us from India and elsewhere today to also understand better stories better. Um, we've set some time aside to hear from those who are working um, at the grassroots to support the ecosystem in Bangladesh. Uh, so we will be hearing um, from those on the call. Um, and, and then, of course, uh, a segment that we at Andy have found particularly valuable um, and what people have given us positive feedback on is the speed networking um, that we will be trying to simulate as well. Uh, with that, um, no further ado, I would like to um, invite Minaz Bhai um, to share opening remarks uh, and tell us a little bit about Better Stories work. And um, honestly, I think uh, his designation is something that we all aspire to have. Uh, Chief Storyteller sounds fabulous. So with that, um, welcome Minaz Bhai, um, handing it over to you. Thank you so much, Sai Priya. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, uh, whatever applies to you. I know quite a global audience are here and uh, very excited to be here uh, in the August company of so many key movers and shakers, not just from Bangladesh, but also from around the world and seeing good friends, Sanurag Malu and, and so forth. So really appreciate all of you taking this time to come here. And I would, I would perhaps try to be brief. Uh, uh, so we all are going through a difficult time and perhaps uh, uh, countries like uh, Bangladesh and India and Nepal in South Asia, we are struggling through, uh, you know, bouts of COVID. Uh, some of it were expected, some of it were not so expected. Uh, if we come to the entrepreneurial ecosystem, particularly the startup ecosystem in Bangladesh, together with Light Castle Partners and Bangladesh Startup Consortium, uh, early uh, uh, last year, uh, at the beginning of the onslaught of COVID, we tried to understand, you know, where the startup ecosystem is in Bangladesh. And uh, there, there are some phenomenal uh, statistics or evidence. Uh, and and I, would, I would like to share some of them. Uh, so one, uh, you know, uh, critical uh, entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem uh, fact has been uh, roughly about 50% uh, entrepreneurs or startups had to shut down uh, their businesses. And roughly about uh, one fourth of them had to pivot, and uh, you know they're doing okay. And I think uh, what were the remaining 25% doing? I would call them the defiant 25%. They were not just doing, uh, you know, what they were doing, but they actually uh, they have been thriving, and particularly because some of them were doing critical and essential services and products. Uh, I, I think it's not very different from rest of the world, I would imagine, particularly in the comparable economy. But what is more striking fact for Bangladesh ecosystem is uh, it, we figured that this 25% of the startups uh, have been directly or indirectly employing about 1.5 million people. To put it in context, uh, directly and indirectly, of course, to put it in context, 
uh, the garments industry, which is the biggest foreign exchange earner for the country, uh, which is a 40 years old industry uh, being supported through a lot of subsidies and support, policy support and so forth, uh, and in global, you know, uh, uh, privileges and whatnot. They have been employing about 3.5 million people, whereas the startup ecosystem has been fairly nascent, like, you know, a couple of years old. Uh, I would also argue that the quality of the jobs in the startup ecosystem is definitely far better with all the humility and respect to the people who are in the garments industry. Uh, particularly the fact that, you know, some of these people who are working in the uh, startup ecosystem today as employees, they will turn into entrepreneurs themselves pretty soon. And I think this virtuous cycle will perhaps take over and soon Bangladesh economy will have a lot of reliance and dependence on the startup ecosystem. And what amazes me, I'm sure all of you would agree that the exponential growth these entrepreneurs can pursue is, is amazing. And, and that's, you know, my uh, uh, faith in the future of this country, the country being more than 65%, you know, under 35, we're going to make that, you know, uh, to best of our advantage. Uh, so uh, one other fact that I would like to point out uh, that, you know, over last uh, year and a half through COVID, I think one of the flip side or one of the better part of uh, the COVID is we have now become global. And all the entrepreneurs that I have seen in the last couple of months who started first time, they're global first, no longer they're local first. So that brings us to this forum. I think the fact that 120 ND members are interested in Bangladesh, we do present a huge opportunity, not just only to invest, but also solve some of the biggest problems of the planet together. And uh, we know that in, in this room, we have got some brilliant minds, some movers and shakers from the ecosystem in Bangladesh, also from around the world. And I'm sure some of, some of us, we have worked together before COVID, and what we are now imagining to deliver together, I think much different than what we did before together. So I'm really looking forward to an exciting conversation and uh, really appreciate this partnership. And I hope we can do more of this and, and we can also, uh, you know, have more people from around the world and from Bangladesh continuing to engage in this conversation and supporting entrepreneurs who are making a difference through COVID. Thank you so much. Salaamu Alaikum. Welcome again. Thank you. Um, thank you, Minaz Bhai, for those um, kind words. I'm just going to share my screen uh, again. Just one second. Yes. All right. Uh, I, I think um, you've covered a lot of what I wanted to also be sharing. Uh, and that, that, that is sort of the key point in terms of the world becoming increasingly connected and digital and how um, it is important now more than ever for us to be looking at collaboration beyond borders. Uh, and that was one of the main reasons that we wanted to um, start looking uh, at um, Bangladesh and the ecosystem there as well. Uh, so just a quick refresher for those on the call um, who might not uh, be familiar with Andy's work. Um, so who is Andy? Um, Andy is basically short for the Aspen Network of Development Entrepreneurs. Um, we're one of the programs of the Aspen Institute. Um, it is a global network of intermediary organizations that um, looks to support entrepreneurship in developing economies. Um, we have eight chapters um, across the world um, that you can see on the slide in front of you. Uh, and currently we have a network of over 300 global members um, who support small and growing businesses in varying ways. Uh, Andy acts as a convener, um, as the ecosystem builder and as a strategic connector to these organizations that are a part of our network. Just once, yes. Uh, so I think, um, of course, Minaz Bhai and those on the call who are representing Bangladesh have a fair better sense of these statistics, and this is something that you might have already seen before, but um, just for those dialing in from other regions as well, um, why looking at Bangladesh and why now? Um, one, of course, is the sheer number of that 300 plus global members that you've seen who are interested um, in the Bangladesh entrepreneur ecosystem, um, which is something that was already said previously. Um, it is an increasingly virtual world we're living in that um, collaboration is not limited by borders anymore. 
Um, Bangladesh has definitely a rapidly maturing entrepreneurship ecosystem with over 200 million being invested in the last four years alone. Um, and of course, these, these are numbers that I think you might have a better sense of and more updated versions of as well. Uh, and another significant factor being the median age of the country, um, such that uh, we're looking at a, a young and growing country that is looking to take risks and, um, you know, take up something like entrepreneurship to help solve some of these greater pressing challenges. Uh, when um, something that you see us using a term that you'll see us using is SGBs and um, what that stands for is small and growing businesses. So just um, a quick um, definition of what we mean by small and growing businesses at Andy are those businesses that are looking to um, seek growth capital anywhere between 20,000 and $2 million um, and have between five to 250 employees. So these are um, those businesses that are, you know, um, have outgrown the needs that could be sort of met by micro enterprise, um, traditional, um, you know, those micro enterprise finance, but also um, considered small enough to look at traditional sort of larger commercial financing sources. Uh, I won't spend too much time, but just a quick um, uh, uh, refresher or uh, look into what Andy's strategy looks like in the region. And if these are something that's of interest to those on the call that you would like to understand further, um, we can definitely connect in the, um, the speed networking sessions as well. Uh, Andy looks at um, sort of the central pillar of our work is to continue making the case for small and growing businesses um, in the regions that we're presenting. Um, how can we help increase the effectiveness of intermediary organizations um, such as incubators, accelerators, and pretty much that entire gambit of entrepreneur supporters that, um, that work in that space? Um, there are sectors that we've identified which are cross-cutting and don't have um, specific vertical focus, which are talent, um, access to finance and impact management and measurement being those issues that um, small businesses and entrepreneurs continue to grapple with irrespective of the space they work in. Um, we, we did identify three urgent issues that we would like to channelize our efforts in going forward, um, which are um, decent work gender equality um, and environmental action. This of course is in alignment with the larger UN SDGs um, that were also identified. Uh, a quick look at who is a part of the global network. When I say 300 plus members, you know, what are the kind of organizations that are represented? Um, we have um, capacity development providers, investors, um, the larger sort of corporations, corporate foundations, um, and even representation from the DFIs and other research bodies. Uh, so like I said, that entire sort of spectrum um, that looks at supporting entrepreneurs uh, is in some ways represented in um, Andy's membership. Um, we do have um, some of our members, of course, on the call today. And to give you a sense of who are these members when we talk about our numbers, just putting some um, familiar faces or logos, um, as you may say, to these um, numbers. Uh, organizations um, that help build capacity um, like YGAP, NVU, OPAYA, um, the larger DFIs like USAID, um, DAI, uh, and other network associations like the Impact Investors Council are a few of the names that um, are part of the Andy network. Um, just to give you a sense of what being a part of the membership looks like and how people work together, we've had members working together on implementing projects together, receiving funding from each other, um, using advisory services, uh, or even tapping into potential pipelines um, so that they can help um, build their uh, impact and the, the outreach of their work as well. Uh, so if, if this is something that's of interest to you and you'd like to um, understand this for your organization further, um, we will be sharing our contact details at the end of this event. Feel free to reach out um, and we can see how um, in partnership with organizations like Better Stories, how we can sort of help support some of the work that you do in other ecosystems as well. Uh, Maybe um, just wanted to draw quick examples on what Andy members are doing in the region. One of the examples is, of course, MasterCard Center um, that is working with Bureau Bangladesh to unlock credit for women entrepreneurs, um, where they're training uh, women entrepreneurs to be enrolled, who are enrolled in group lending schemes uh, and sort of to help increase access to finance um, for women entrepreneurs in the region. Um, Another example that I wanted to draw attention to is a name that you might be familiar with um, is the Avishkar group that's doing work in Bangladesh um, that has helped set up the Bangladesh Angels um, uh, network where we have Nirjor by joining us today who will be speaking as well. Um, also helped set up the Frontier Fund um, with investments in Bangladesh. These are of course a few of the many examples. Um, we have representatives from other Andy members like NVU on the call who are also looking um, actively to start working in Bangladesh already in the process um, of engaging um, in the circular economy space in the region. 
uh, and we also have um, representatives from Andy members like Amani Institute um, that are offering many virtual capacity building programs that could be of use to those um, dialing in for Bangladesh today if you don't, if you find that of interest. Um, with that, uh, I think we would uh, we'd like to hear it from the ecosystem and those who are working there directly. Uh, so I would request um, Irad Kausar, who's the country director of YGAP, um, and Andy member um, who has been, um, YGAP uh, in Australia has been working closely with Andy, uh, and I would uh, uh, pass this over to him to hear from him now. Hi, I'm um, just checking if Irad is on the call. I did see him dial in. Uh, hello, yes, I am. Hi, yes. Uh, sorry if I put you on the spot and you just dialed in. Um, I just finished speaking about Andy as an organization and thought it'd be great um, to hear how YGAP has leveraged the Andy membership in the past and the potential that you see for um, something like this for Bangladesh as well. So, uh, uh, if, I, if I just uh, focus right on the point that how how Andy as an international interconnectivity network uh, can help an organization who are working uh, to build an ecosystem and, uh, and the ecosystem like Bangladesh who are right at this moment uh, reaching out uh, in the global sphere, reaching out for partnership, reaching out for investments, reaching out for knowledge or um, uh, sharing technology. In that case, we have found that and the uh, very potential regional uh, platform. Because from YGAP, uh, we have been leveraging uh, the experience of uh, Andy in terms of, uh, from the members in terms of uh, like impact uh, management, like uh, financial mappings and uh, connecting entrepreneurs for, uh, to uh, look into mergers. Uh, these were a few sectors where where we have been working along with the Andy members, particularly the knowledge sharing events has been a very very helpful one. But we also also would like to uh, mm, uh, bring in that experience because we have been doing that in the African region, we have been doing that in the Asia Pacific region, but in the South Asia uh, uh, that that is that is yet to mm, we are, we are yet to harvest the benefits uh, so i would i would really like to uh, look into uh, that part because um, now the bangladeshi startups are coming at the mature stage where they would <clears throat> like to um, explore the international market as well uh, because uh, being a small country uh, bangladesh economy has always reached out to the global scene if you look into our rmg or uh, if you look into our uh, uh, the early days when we were doing very good with June, we it was never the local market where where the uh, interest of the businessman lied. It was always the international market in Bangladesh where the interest of business lied. So I think Andy can be a very good platform um, for the startups of Bangladesh where we can follow the path of how. Uh, Historically, historically, the businessmen or entrepreneurs from Bangladesh has actually shown or expanded their business. So I think Andy can be that platform where where we we take the next step of our startup ecosystem building, but uh, keeping the ethos of what our predecessors in the entrepreneurship taught us. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for that. And I think uh, that that was uh, summarized very succinctly when you said that um, it's been happening in other regional ecosystems. And how can we now start looking um, at doing something like this for South Asia, uh, especially in the virtual world that we're living in? Um, with that, I would like to hand it over to Kazi Hassan, who's joining us from Grameen Phone, um, the chief business officer of Grameen Phone. Um, Kazi, if I could hand it over to you. Yeah, sure. So I think uh, from one side, um, slightly different perspective into the Bangladesh market. And um, if I look back for the past, uh, say, six, seven years, when um, I've been really actively engaged, involved with the local ecosystem. Um, yes, we started from a very nascent stage where um, these were some of the homegrown startups looking to solve 
a very simple, a single problem, trying to look towards uh, the large corporates for funding and then making some impact locally. But ever that since uh, last five years at least has been uh, quite significant and we have seen a huge transformation from these very early stages to more mature startups which are currently thinking about solving larger issues that affects or impacts the nation in a positive way, uh, looking to expand their operation in certain cases even beyond geography. And uh, then uh, almost hand in hand partnering up with uh, more complex organizations to really make great impact. And what you have to take uh, this uh, is in the right context. So in an emerging economy like Bangladesh, five years is a, is a long time and we see rapid progress and changes across the time. So some of the key changes have been possible because of companies like uh, Better Stories who have been actively supporting the ecosystem. But also I think uh, there has been a real shift in mindset where startups and uh, being a natural progress into a career and a life that has been much more acceptable. And then secondly, I think one of the biggest areas has been around investments, where previously it was more for the, from the benefit of larger organizations who would sponsor some of the startups. Now we have seen more active investors in the form of VCs, PEs coming into the scene. Some of them and quite a lot of them are international investors and they have really accelerated the growth of startup uh, in Bangladesh context. So, I would say these are the two points uh, from my side that uh, we have really seen the last few years. And uh, I know that the country has a lot more steps to take towards the right direction. But uh, I'm also one of those very optimistic people uh, who thinks that uh, this is the time really within South Asian context to invest in Bangladesh. Sure. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for um, sharing your thoughts. And uh, definitely, I think uh, uh, we agree in terms of the, the the moment, even though the South Asian geographies are going through a bit of a tumult tumultuous time, uh, how can we look at building these ecosystems and support systems better um, as we're looking forward? Uh, with that, I would like to invite um, Nirjor Rahman, the CEO of Bangladesh Angels Network, um, to share his thoughts, please. Nirjor, over to you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's good to be with so many old friends and uh, current friends, including Sucharita and Anurag, uh, but also Bijan Bhai from Light Castle and obviously the Better Stories team. Um, always be in uh, good to be in webinars with you. Um, so as kind of mentioned, uh, just to explain our uh, work, we are the first uh, and largest uh, active angel network in Bangladesh. We've been operating since 2008. Um, Avishkar was involved in, in the creation. People like Minhas Bhai is on the board and has been extremely supportive from the get-go. Uh, and what we typically do is we work with early stage companies to be able to get them access to smart capital by way of both individual, but also institutional investors. So we now have a membership pool of about 200 plus people and institutions both in Bangladesh and around the world. Uh, we have helped facilitate around $1.6 million worth of early stage investments into 15 companies so far in Bangladesh and we want to continue to do so. Um, I think, you know, I would just kind of echo some of the, the points kind of uh, made for by my colleagues like Kazi Bhai, for example. I think, you know, the last five or six years have been extremely interesting for Bangladesh when it comes to the creation of a full-time ecosystem supporting entrepreneurs. You know, YGAP's a great example of that. Obviously, Better Stories has been one of the vanguards of that. Second is obviously the level of government support. I think that, you know, goes, uh, for example, the recent, you know, $60 million startup Bangladesh fund, you know, that's 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 made waves across the region. And I'm getting a lot of emails, in, inbound emails from VCs asking, hey, what about this and, and what's going on in Bangladesh? And then also just the, the level of um, investment, right? So there's been three hundred million dollars plus invested into Series A, Series B plus um, startups in Bangladesh, ninety percent from abroad. And I think you know platforms like this. I'm really excited to be a part of because I think you know the name of the game going into this year and and forward is further international linkages. You know we've been uh, privileged to be able to do co investments with partner um, you know angel networks, partner VCs in places like Singapore, Korea, and, and other places uh, recently. And we you know we'd love to kind of leverage the power of Andy to be able to connect to the impact ecosystem, uh, both in Southeast Asia and around the world. So really excited to be here and, and definitely looking forward to connecting with you guys. Sure, um, thank you so much for sharing those thoughts. And we do have um, a couple of impact investors on the call as well. So we could have a chance for you to connect um, maybe in the speed networking rounds. 
Um, with that, I would like to invite um, the final speaker for today, um, Bijon Bhai, who is the CEO and the co-founder of Lightcastle Partners. Um, Bijon Bhai, if you could please share your thoughts as well. Uh, thank you, Shapriya, for inviting me. And you know, thank you, the Better Stress team, uh, Minas Bhai and Anapa, for inviting me as well. I know again, uh, you know, excited to see so many familiar faces and new faces, and you know, uh, glad to be part of this room and this important initiative. Uh, so I think Bangladesh, uh, we have all seen the growth that has happened over the last uh, five to ten years, right? Over a decade, growing between anything between five to eight percent, right? I think when I uh, was studying uh, at a university, the GDP of Bangladesh was something around forty-six billion. Right now, it's close to three hundred and fifty billion, right? And that's like just uh, 25 years down the line. So we're very excited and we just crossed our 50 years as well. I think if we look at how Bangladesh should approach the growth, I think uh, one thing to realize is that Bangladesh is a country of 160 million people with 50% under the age of 35, right? And that means there's a high talent pool that the global market can leverage. It can happen in uh, sectors like ICT, right? Where already Bangladesh exports close to 1 billion. I know it's nowhere near India, but you know, it's still a start. And I think these numbers can definitely grow. Uh, Bangladesh remittances, uh, people, human capital working all over the world kind of send close to 15 to $16 billion each year. That is Bangladesh's highest uh, Forex uh, uh, kind of earnings comes from remittance. And I think this talent can be leveraged all over the world. We can build services in ICT, we can build services in SaaS, we can uh, uh, build uh, services that can be exported. And I think that, that can definitely help by leveraging this talent pool. The second way I think Bangladesh definitely has a huge opportunity, again, going to the global market is similar to, of course, a, a bit smaller than India and China, but still we have a large NRB and you know, diaspora pool. There are 15 to 20 million Bangladeshis living outside. They need services, they need connectivity to the country, whether it's through you know, sending in money or whether it's getting products from Bangladeshi origin. And if this can be leveraged, this can be again uh, Bangladesh's way into a lot of this global market as well. Lastly, I think Bangladesh is not uh, known for a lot of innovations, but I want to say that Bangladesh also has a lot of opportunity. For example, microfinance is a Bangladesh innovation that has grown all over the world. Uh, you know, now everyone knows about it and they have been using this effectively. And I think there are similar uh, innovations in the Bangladesh market, including hosting the world's largest NGO, including having the world's fastest growing MFS. There's a lot of innovations I think the Bangladesh can give back to the world as well. So I think the world is more global than ever, right? Because of the, uh, you know, uh, the crisis that we have been in because of the technology that we are right now. And I think again, uh, the talent that we have, uh, the NRB and the diaspora linkage that we have and the innovations that we have created, if this can be leveraged correctly, I think that truly we can become a more global world, you know, Bangladesh uh, companies uh, building products and services for the globe. Thank you. Back to you, Shapriya. Yes, uh, no, thank you for joining us, Tokoro. I see that you have to leave, but um, uh, we are um, at, we're close to wrapping up. Uh, I just wanted to thank the Better Stories team for being patient um, with us and putting this together. Thank you, Sharnila, Selena, Abba. It was a pleasure working um, with the both of you to craft this. And we sincerely hope um, that uh, the ones who joined today had the opportunity to network um, across borders. And these are connections that you'll continue to build off of. Um, I will request, Sorry, go ahead. So, did, did someone say will something? We, will we have access for, thank you so much. Great. Will we have access to this video or at least a list of the people, the participants and their organizations? Because that will that'll at least compensate for the speed rounds. Sure, sure, Muna. The, we will definitely um, be sending out um, uh, the highlights of the, the recording um, and list of the participants in a follow up email. Uh, and you can reach out to the Andy and the Better Stories team if there are any specific organizations that you would like um, connections facilitated. To. We'd be happy to do that at our front. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I would request my colleague Jamila to um, share a link to a feedback form, um, which will take just two minutes um, at your end to fill out. Will really help us uh, in um, understanding what worked for you and how we can facilitate some of these um, these uh, events and connections better. Uh, and of course, um, we will also share, um, I, I see people already sharing email addresses and links to websites. Um, precisely, please sort of keep doing that and um, let us know how we can help with some of these conversations. Uh, and if I may call in um, Minaz Bhai for a couple of closing thoughts uh, before we sort of close out the session. Sorry to put you on the spot, Minaz Bhai, you're still on. 
No, I think it's amazing uh, how in a very short amount of time we got to meet so many people. And also I think you have created that craving to meet more. So I think this conversation will continue beyond this call. And that was exactly the purpose. And I think the beauty of all of us coming together is perhaps that we are beginning to talk about more partnerships, collaborations, and opportunities. So perhaps uh, sometime soon, some of these will come to fruition and we cannot be any more grateful uh, for this wonderful partnership and opportunity with Andy and also everybody in the room who kindly came uh, spending their precious time. So really looking forward to do more of this and thank you so much. Pleasure really having you all. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Um, thank you, Minaz Bhai. Um, if you can see chat, I think there are a lot of people sort of sharing their um, personal contacts and we've also shared the Andy social media handles where we continue to share updates of all events, opportunities in the small and growing business ecosystem um, in India and now increasingly South Asia as well. So um, sort of very happy to get this conversation started. Uh, and thank you so much to everyone for taking the time to join us today. Uh, we look Sorry, I yeah, want to ahead, touch you me. for one second before we leave. I'd like to request those of us who are here, if we could take a group photo uh, and we could just have our cameras on. I think we should commemorate this great opportunity to, you know, have everybody on the same page. No, that's, sorry, that, that's one thing that I definitely missed out on. Yes, please do. Yeah, um, if, if there is the option available, I would recommend we use the immersive CM. That will be fun. Sorry, I, I did not understand. Any advice on how to get that, Bhaiya? I will definitely try it if we can. Don't worry if we can't, just uh, we, we use the video on mode. Sure, but if you do know how to do it, maybe I can look for it. But otherwise, I'd like everybody to smile um, and maybe just say, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so let's just say Andy. Okay, one, two, say Andy. 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 Is, um, Andy. I just, I'm just going to head over to the second page. I couldn't get everyone. So I think just hold on for another second. One, two, three, and Andy. Andy. Oh, got it. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, we will follow up um, with the resources share. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, too. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone.